What's good guys, it's TSG. In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about the massive bombshell that Alluvium just dropped about how they're transitioning from Unreal Engine 4 to Unreal Engine 5. All right, I'm going to come in straight away with a disclaimer. I'm not an expert at Unreal Engine at all, but I did do a bit of research, so I did get clued up a bit before I made this video. And during my research, I actually found something very, very interesting. And that is, if you smash the like button and hit subscribe, my knowledge level about the topic actually skyrockets. So you'd be doing me a huge favor if you could get that done for me. I'm gonna jump straight into it and then reveal to you what I've kind of learned through my, my research um, about Unreal Engine 5. And the first thing, the first biggest change from Unreal Engine 4 to Unreal Engine 5 is actually something called lumens. Essentially, it's always been a goal to simulate something called global illumination. Another name for global illumination is something called bounce lighting. And all this means is that when light gets brought into a scene or, or frame, it can automatically assess where the light is going to bounce based on the different surfaces in that space, creating a more realistic feel for, for the viewer, for the gamer, whatever you'd like to say there. So if we have a look at the scene in front of us, the light source coming through the window seems to just kind of come in, hit the floor and just stop. Whereas in reality, that's not what would happen. In reality, it'd come through the window, hit the floor and bounce off into the walls and illuminating the entire space. But that's not happening in the scene. So if we implemented global illumination or bounce lighting, the scene would actually look like this with the light coming in, bouncing off the, the floor and illuminating the rest of the space. This looks a lot more realistic than just the three, three or four rays of light that come in and just stop that that makes no sense and, and in no reality is that a real thing so movies have previously been able to somewhat achieve uh this result through something called path tracing but the problem with this is it takes a very very long time for just even to render a single frame it can even take hours for one frame to properly render and obviously using this on games in real time would just be it would destroy the entire game as most games run what 60 uh, 60 to 120 fps so rendering it on the fly per per frame is just it's just unsustainable it's just not going to happen so what they've previously done to fake global illumination is they've actually path traced and rendered all of the lighting and the shadows before the game is actually played and then overlaid it on top of the well to make it look like it's a natural thing but it's not it's not happening in real time. It's all pre-rendered and placed in position. This gives the illusion that the light is bouncing and it gives it a feeling that it is natural, but actually it is just a pre-rendered texture. So the problem with this is if in many, many games, it limits things. If you were to move a boulder, for example, in a game, uh, the, the shadow there wouldn't actually move along with it uh, because it's not a natural thing. It's a pre-rendered overlay uh, and it's not going to update in real time. So it kind of limits the possibilities of what you can actually do there. And the only way to go about it is to actually pre-render it before the game is even played, overlay it again, and again, it just takes way too much time. And it's just not, it's obviously not the way of the future. Uh, it's just a very inefficient way of doing things. After doing my research, I've realized this is exactly why Lumen is actually going to be a game changer. Because with Lumen, a pre-rendered overlay isn't actually going to be required at all to create this global illumination. This, this idea, this feel of, of bounce lighting and natural lighting and, and just a realistic feel, that's not gonna be required at all. It's gonna be able to achieve that realistic bounce lighting in real time. And we can see in this video that moving the chair in real time actually moves the shadows according to the location of the surface. And as you can see, if we start closing off the light source, it actually, the lighting in the room closes off as it would naturally. And when you open it, it allows in the light naturally in real time. So there's no excessive time needed for rendering. Uh, it's all done real time right in front of us. And this slight change is actually gonna make building a lot more time efficient in my opinion. This is all happening in real time. And this is, was actually near impossible to achieve in Unreal Engine 4. So that is a massive, massive upgrade into Unreal Engine 5. So moving on to the second biggest difference between Unreal Engine 4 and Unreal Engine 5 is the implementation of something called Nanite. So every object you see in the game is made of polygons. And the more polygons in an object, the longer it takes to render, but the more detail that it has. Previously, developers would have to create multiple levels of an object using something called levels of detail. And that just means they create the same object multiple times with different shaped polygons 
So an object further away would have larger polygons and smaller polygons when it's closest. So this is how they present different levels of detail based on distance by creating multiple designs with different polygon counts. With the new implementation of Nanite, Nanite now allows these polygons to dynamically deform to reduce the amount of polys on an object. So you would only need one mesh instead of multiple levels. And this alone is again going to save so much time instead of having people to develop and model multiple versions, multiple levels of one object. The third thing that I want to talk about today is actually addressing some concerns from the Alluvium community about transferring from Unreal Engine 4 to Unreal Engine 5. And if that's going to have any delays in production, what kind of hindrances is that going to cause? Luckily, from my research, I found out that it doesn't seem like it's going to be any issue to transfer all of the software and modeling from Unreal Engine 4 to Unreal Engine 5. It doesn't seem like it's going to cause much issue and it looks like it's not going to have a negative effect on development time, if any. And if there is, it, it seems like it's going to be very, very slight, so it's nothing to actually worry about. And the final thing that has got me really, really excited about this change from Unreal 4 to Unreal 5 is the company that we're going to be keeping. I was looking up some of the games that are actually being built on Unreal Engine 5 and the quality is next level. So some of the most anticipated games using Unreal Engine 5 are things like Vigilance 2099. You have Black Myth Wukong, which seems like an awesome game. Uh, I think that's coming out in 2023 at some point. Uh, Senua Saga, Hellblade 2. I don't know if you guys have watched the gameplay video for that, but that looks absolutely insane. Uh, I'm going to put that, obviously you're watching that on the screen right now as I'm speaking. There are other games that have been announced but haven't been revealed. The gameplay hasn't been revealed, but we know they're being built ground up with Unreal Engine 5. And games such as the new Witcher, the new Gears of War, you've got Dragon Quest and the new Tomb Raider. So all of those games are being built with Unreal Engine 5. And the reason I say that's exciting for me is the fact that Alluvium is a blockchain game but it's going to be held in the same quality as these large, large names, Hellblade 2, Witcher, Gears of War, Dragon Quest. They're all going to be developed of the same quality. And I think that's going to be a massive thing for blockchain games in general and just Alluvium individually to be looked at by mainstream gamers as an actual viable option in terms of quality. But anyway, guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. And I'm really excited about making this video. I'm so glad I was actually able to research something and get some knowledge about something. I feel like you guys did smash the like button. So I do feel like I did level up in that knowledge skill. So I appreciate you guys for doing that. Uh, and for those of you guys who haven't done that yet, again, like, subscribe, hit the notification button, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.